Give me a few more minutes to set up, making sure everything is squared away and I'm not going to have too many hiccups and then I'll get started. I can tell you what, though, yesterday was one heck of a good show. I got a, I got a lot of feedback after the show, which I, I, I got to appreciate. I think a lot of people resonated with that word, authenticity, in our dogs. Uh, a lot of people resonated it. Um, I know a lot of people who messaged me. They knew it. They just didn't find that word to kind of like identify it. But they knew it. Uh, so it, it was a really, really good thing that made a connection with, and even made a connection with me, of course. But I, I hope it, um, I hope we can think about that and maybe take the fakeness out of ourselves so we can appear the same thing to our dogs. Be authentic. Uh, I had a friend yesterday even was complaining about his girlfriend being the way she was and I said what did you expect that and they're like yeah he said he expected it hey, she's pretty authentic isn't she when I say authentic it also means the bad stuff not just the good stuff it's also the bad stuff it's all of it it's consistency it's reliability in the inconsistency so that's, that's, uh, there we go. That's, that's the name of the, th I'm going to make sure here. See, we have anything going on here. It was an amazing show. Thank you, Capri. Appreciate that. Uh, Sabrina's here and uh, two others are watching. I don't get all of it, everybody, but today is going to be a show on dog reactivity and aggression. If you think about it, it's um, what I'm going to show you applies to both, but how to solve it is a little bit different, but it does apply to both. Carrie CK is watching. So Carrie, when you brought me your dog, this dog that I'm going to show here in the video in the show looks a lot like your dog, but your dog was, was reactive but it just needed some boundaries and then channel it into that ball i remember that because i gave you that ball <laughs> but uh so you can really uh you can really be somebody who if they say it doesn't work you can obviously you have you have it in your face that it worked right in front of you so it's, it's kind of nice. Yes, his ball. That's the most important thing. Uh, there's a way to solve problems. Excuse me. There's a way to fix problems, but you also have to solve them. And that's pretty much in, in, in life in general. All right. But we're gonna definitely going to cover that. Missy Zimmerman's on here. Um, so at least I know you guys can hear me. I got a lot of things squared away. Going to be an hour show. Um, but again, it's going to be full of detail, not too much video. I only got two videos. You'll get to see my new dog, sweetie here, because I taught her something now that, uh, which she learned that's for the first thing she learned what I'm going to show you. But I taught, I teach my dogs this right from the beginning, what I'm going to show you to relieve some of that stress from 
starting to be reactive. You're going to see what I do. And there's several ways of teaching it and probably be just for another show. So I got a good feedback from quite a few trainers, uh, quite a few trainers thanking me for, uh, for putting a word to what, to what they've been thinking about for a long time. Uh, some police canine trainers, some uh, just trainers like me that just train on their own and with, their, with people. So it was good. Good evening, Sabrina. Uh, Lori Sue's on here. Great. Good show for you to watch, Lori. Really good. Uh, Zimmerman, hi, Lori. That's your sister, isn't it? I think, I think I'm right. All right. Uh, I could be wrong. Got a lot of things going in my head right now. I could be, I could be wrong. So we're going to talk about dog reactivity and dog aggression here in just a minute. is here I seen that let's see uh, real quick just watch yesterday's show so much resonated with me in our last Akita uh, and your dog you're right your eldest daughter is struggling to bond with our new dog we know it's because she feels unloyal ah nice parallel that you made um y you're you're right so uh, um Laura how do you build loyalty with the dog play I'll answer your question really quick. Play. Ball. Ball is the best way to play with your dog, to bond with it quicker and faster. Okay? As soon as they that dog sees your daughter, boom, it clicks. Let's play. And then the, the, the feeling is positive instead of internally. It's, it, it's almost external. All right? Just like when you see someone that's happy. Uh, humanity. You see humanity. It's external. feels good. All right? Feels good from the outside in, and that's what you want. Uh, quick disclaimer, all right? If you're going to do what I'm going to show you, please be aware that you should know a little bit about dog body language if it's not your dog. Some things that I consider are ear infections, tooth issues, and even some injuries on their body. So make sure this dog gets checked by a vet before you start doing stuff like this. Or you, if you're going to take the risk as a trainer, remember, it, you assume the risk when you're out there and you do something with somebody's dog, you assume the risk. So if you get bit, unless the owner doesn't disclose the aggressive propensity, you may have nothing to fall back on. So make sure that you know what you're doing. If you don't, refer them to somebody who does. Nothing wrong with saying, hey, this dog's out of my league. Because your ego is going to get you in trouble like it did for me in the beginning. You know, very, very important. All right. I hope that answered your question, uh, Laura. Uh, so really quick, again, some things that I consider. I wouldn't do something, uh, what I'm going to show you, if the dog had an ear infection. A lot of the times, some ear infections will cause the dog to be reactive. They're miserable. They want to get other dogs away. And then every time they bark, their ear hurts. It's counterproductive. Their ear hurts, they're barking. Their ear hurts, they're barking. They're irritable. Ah, you got to calm them down and relax them. All right? Very, very important. You're going to see a lot of the times how we inadvertently pair words during a dog's behavior. I didn't mean that to happen. Well, it doesn't matter what, how, what you meant. What matters is what happened. All right? I don't, I'm not that tactful. I'm not, I'm not that assertive with, with my clients, but I'm just saying it you know, as I'm talking right now. So very important. Daniel Scott's on here. Hello from uh, Charlevoix. Oh, that's, I, you got a lot of snow up there, uh, Daniel? We got a little bit here, not much. Um, in fact, I had a, uh, a college student in December from Charlevoix who wants to start training up there. 
and I kind of gave her a whole bunch of tips. So hopefully she makes it up there. She sounded like she had really good intuition about dog training. Uh, Amy, uh, Amy, Amy Sloan's on here. Thank you, Amy. Hello, Lynn Ramsey. Um, I don't want to miss anybody, but I do want to get the show started. Uh, so remember, dog reactivity, dog aggression. What is the difference, Hector? What is the difference? So let me, uh, oh, let me, let me not do that. Let me show you this. Make things a little easier. Dog reactive. Let me make this really simple for you guys. It's drama. Just a lot of drama. <laughs> when I see dog reactive, I see dramatic. Drama dog. Could be bully, but mostly drama. Destructive barking to relieve stress. Now, my job as a trainer is to find out how the dog got reactive. It's just not so simple as to say, okay, now the dog's reactive, let's train. Ah, uh, no, I'm doing a huge disservice to the owner. If I don't tell the owner how the dog got that way so they can stop the dog from being that way. Because once you fix the problem with training, now you have to make sure that the owner doesn't go home and reinforce what you've been working on or it's going to look like you're not a good trainer. You don't want that. Oh, Hector, help me, but my dog still has a problem. Well, that's because you still got the problem at home. What do I mean by that? The dog's still barking out the window. Now, you get some people will say, oh, that, that, that doesn't cause dog reactivity. Well, well let me tell you, you're, you're debating me and arguing with me just so you can say that I'm wrong. But let me tell you something. How, using your, your gift of reasoning, if a dog looks out the window and barks and barks and barks at another dog, what is he doing or she? It's being reactive. So then stop letting them look out the window. Put some window film at the window. Okay, I'm wrong. Then keep doing what you're doing. You'll find out. Perimeter patrolling. Instead of letting your dog out loose just out in your backyard under underground fence or, or even a... Um, uh, radius fence or even a pr or even just a uh, a fence a chain link fence that they can see through instead of doing that go out there with them and play with them and when somebody walks by with a dog or, or just somebody walks by the dog can care less about him because he's playing all right i'm going to go into this right now so we kind of we kind of get our minds into how we can fix it dog aggression that's a little bit more serious isn't it the dog wants to bite to relieve the stress yes he barks but you're gonna see how I'm, where I massage him to relax him. You're gonna see it. I'm not gonna stop the video. I, the only editing I did was towards the end because I walk and I walk off, off my, uh, off the camera lens. But I, that's the only time I edit it. But in in the face of in the face of where I massage the dog, I keep recording, so you can see it. Okay, so. Dog, dog, um, dog aggression is a reaction that evolved, evolved into a bite to relieve stress. This dog wants to bite to relieve the stress that the dog reactivity caused. It, it can be a process. Can be. In most cases, it is. All right? In most cases, it is. All right? Uh, so then you have to manage the dog's instinct through play. Number one thing, like what, uh, one of the first things I told Carrie before my show started, Remember, okay, Carrie, we stopped the dog from, um, from going after my dog, but now that dog still has aggression in him. You got to get it out with a ball. You got to get it out. If not, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not helping you. I might be taking your money, but I'm not helping you, which is not very ethical. I got to do both. I have to do both. Right? Very, very important. So, if the dog is barking out the window and then you take it for a walk, it's going to do the same thing. It just trained itself to do the same thing from the window to the leash. Same thing. All right. Very, very important. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I want to make sure I get everything. Uh, some breeds are predisposed to be aggressive and territorial. So there are some breeds that when they come to me and the owner says they're aggressive, I'm like, okay, and that's what, 
that's what the breed is predisposed to do. Well, I, I didn't I didn't know this, Hector. Okay, so then what do I tell them? The education needs to start in the beginning when they're puppies, so they don't evolve to the point that you're at. Okay, you're there. That's fine. Let's 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 go about it. Let's go about it a little backwards. But it's okay. Still not still not a um, still not a losing battle. It's just a little more difficult battle. But it's still not a losing battle. So we have to backtrack. So right now, my puppy does not look out the window. Right now, my puppy, if I'm outside, it's out with me playing. Okay? When it sees another dog, it just looks at it and just wants to play with the ball. Forget about that dog. You know, forget about that person. I don't care. I want to play with that. In the house, it's not looking out the window. Does it want to? Oh, yeah. Very curious when it hears a noise. But it, it just hears the noise. It doesn't make a connection with the noise. All right? Sees a person. Maybe in a uniform, barks and goes crazy, and then the uniform walks away. Now the dog is going to think that anybody in uniform it can scare away. And now it becomes reactive to maybe just people in the uniform or just people in general, depending on how the dog interprets his world. All right? So this is why it's very important not to allow him to look out the window. Very important. So then we go into that. Now... How do we expose the dog? So this is what I commonly hear that frustrates me. Hector, I was told to um, socialize my dog if it's reactive. That is one of the worst advice you can give an owner with a dog who's reactive. Now, why? You're over socializing the dog and you're not doing anything to help the dog. The dog's just going to keep getting worse, worse, and worse, and worse. The only time that works, that's if the dog is shy. And it wouldn't be reactive then. It most likely would want its boundaries to be respected by another dog. So then it preempts its barking to get this dog away from them, from the distance. So as trainers, we have to be able to differentiate the difference. So it's very important that you don't over you know, over socialize a dog because it's reactive unless there's an exception to the rule the dog is shy now there, you, if you don't know what shy looks like then go back to my body language video a few years ago that I talk about the difference between a shy and a fearful dog but you have to know that if you over socialize this dog and he's reactive how do you expect it to get better it's gonna get worse it's gonna get worse now once you do that, you look at the dog and you try to determine everything that's on this dog. Example, the dog that you're going to see in the video here pretty soon, it came with a harness. Jenny and Zach brought the dog. Mia, I think, hopefully, if they're watching, if I, if I get it wrong, don't, don't be upset. Um, but the dog had a harness. The dog had a flat collar. And listen to this. The dog had tags, and you could hear all the tags go off. So all of those are triggers to the dog's behavior, even if they don't use the harness very much. Because the dog feels that, hears that, and it triggers the dog's reactivity. Really quick. Very, very important. So the automatic nervous system is out of control when that happens. You'll see how it comes together. So how do I start the reset process? I take everything off the dog. And then I put a different collar on the dog. Usually one that doesn't make any noise. Whether it's a nylon collar or a star mark. Uh, star mark is plastic. And the... Uh, the nylon choke chain, obviously, by its name, it's nylon. So both of them don't make any noise, allowing them to form a what? A trigger. So I give everything that they're used to having on, when they're reactive, goes off. And then I put something new on. All right? That's just the body. That's just the body. That's very important. If you put anything that the dog is used to back on, what are you signaling to the dog to be dog reactive? Didn't make any sense, does it? Remember, our job is to reset the dog. So if you're going to reset the dog, you have to change what you've been doing. 
All right, you have to change what you've been doing. Uh, what if you don't allow the window shopping, but you still have sparked everything? So when that happens, Sabrina, that means you've gone way too far past that. So now the dog is uh, almost like has PTSD. Here's a little noise and it triggers it. So what I'm going to show you today is going to help. And then also a supplement to calm the adrenaline gland, which I don't have on here. That's more of a more of a uh, advanced thing here. But, and, but then again, but then again, you, you're really going to have to draw, draw, drown out a lot of that noise that triggers the dog. This is why when I'm gone, my dog's in the crate, covered up, covered up, draw some of that noise. Some people play music on. That way it draws the outside noise away so they don't trigger. Very, very important. Steve Clemens here. Thank you, Steve. Kimberly Rose is on. Thank you. Uh, and a text. Uh, Odie is drama queen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and a text. Other sibling dogs. So, yeah, I do remember that. We got about a two, three inch here from yesterday. Nothing wild yet. Oh, that's good. Dan. That's not bad, though. Not too bad. Uh, Tori, uh, Troy Herman. Thank you for watching, Troy. Amy Sloan. Yep, I got you here. Uh, Carol Krieger Lowe Morganoff. I think I just accepted your friend's request today. That was good. I, I That was good. I got a, quite a few friend's requests today. I have to wean out some people. Let's see here. So, okay. So, uh, scenario. Being on the fire service, say we were called to either just a smoke fire alarm or, God forbid, a house fire. We roll uh, on a scene with our gear and mask. And we come across a scared dog. Oh, how do we handle that? Ah, Daniel, I have a class on that in itself. Um, that's that's a loaded question. But in short, um, fear they should be running away, not attacking you. Okay? But there are some dogs, um, Daniel, it's better description as an aggressive scared dog. Um, there are some dogs who will protect their owner when they when they feel that they're vulnerable. So then they stand right over them or they're next to them and you can't come near them. This is where I teach owners, if your dog is this aggressive and you have a medical condition, come on. What do you expect fire just to watch? In some cases, they almost have to. So the reason why your, your question is very loaded, Daniel, because there's different scenarios for small dogs medium-sized dogs, and huge dogs that can cause a lot of damage in such a, in such a uh, short amount of time. So there, there's, there's, there's three answers to all three. I want to answer your question, but I think it's going to take about 10 minutes out of my show. But, but again, that would be a, that's, that's what I teach on, how, on preparing yourself for dog enco uh, encounters for first aid responders and police. But in, in, in short, just so I answer your question because it's a valid one, you want to make sure that if time and circumstances permit, uh, really, first, your safety is number one. Yes, your safety is number one. Now, I know you guys have altruistic behavior. I, I get that. First responders, police, they, I know they have altruistic behavior. But really, evaluate your risk. If it's a small dog, you can just push them off with maybe a ladder or, or even a sheet or maybe with a shoe. You know, a shoe meaning not your shoe on your foot, you know, shoo them away, you know, uh, maybe with a backboard or something. But you, you're dealing different with like a, a medium-sized dog. You could use a backboard, you know, over 75 pounds. Man, I tell you, you're going to have to call police and just wait for them to get there because I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's tough. And, and a lot of the times, trained dogs will bite firemen because their body looks like a bodysuit. Their uniform looks like a bodysuit. So they'll go after them. Just on that simple visual alone. Good question, though. Man, I want to answer your question in detail because this is what I teach. But again, this is dog reactive and dog aggression. I hope that helped a little bit, Daniel. I hope it did. Okay. So again, you got to take everything off the dog that the dog came in with. Everything. So you have to reset the dog. All right. I kind of do this a little bit with human behavior. How to reset yourself but not with 
taking your clothes off, totally something different. <laughs> but, but the words still apply, all right? Um, you're going to make sure that the owner doesn't use the same words it's been using before. Because remember, when you say certain things, you could trigger the dog back to where it was. There are many, many, and I, I, I'm telling you, many cases where when the owner says, good boy, good girl, the dog reacts. And the dog thinks, or even yelling, the dog thinks because it paired it, it thinks it's supposed to do that. Even when you give them a treat after they bark, they think, oh, I'm supposed to bark and get a treat. So I'm going to keep barking to get a treat. And then they start pairing things together. Dog, you know, we, we, we always say dogs are really smart, but then if that's the case, then let them do the thinking. Don't do all the thinking for them. Let them do the thinking if they're that smart. And they are. They're not thinking about their bills. They're not thinking about what they're going to wear. They're not thinking about what they're going to eat. All they're thinking about is right there at that moment. They're very mindful. So whatever words you hear the owner say, during your initial consultation with the dog and you watch them, you remember, what are they saying? What should they not say now? Change the word in some cases. Not all cases, but in some cases, you're going to have to reset the dog. So that means changing the word, changing the collar, changing the harness, changing things. This is why a lot of the times you'll see dog aggression, I put a head halter on them. You see what I mean? The pressure's off their neck. There's no more triggers. Why do you put a head, why do you put a head halter on the dog? Well, because I have to be able to manage him better, and I don't want to trigger him back to where he was in the beginning, especially if he's been abused with a shock collar. I'm going to change things up. Now, if they're, if they're reactive towards the head collar, uh, and they come to me to misuse the head collar, then we're going to do off-leash training first, to see if they need to set boundaries, then we're going to do the, the, uh, the resetting as far as the body goes, okay? A lot of cases, including Carrie that's on here, her dog was fixed in about 15, 20 minutes. A lot of dog reactivity, not dog aggression, a lot of dog reactivity can be stopped by disciplining the dog. A lot of it can. Dog aggression, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time, all right? Um, it's going to take some time to go backwards. My goal is to raise a puppy and not develop dog reactivity so I don't have to worry about it later. Same with dog aggression. I'm out there playing with my dog four times a day, all right? All right, let me see if I got any questions and I'm going to go into the video. I want to talk with my chief about possibly having you, you come to our department and possibly talk with us. Uh, said my scenarios, I'll shoot you a, absolutely, Daniel. Yeah, talk to our chief. They definitely help something I can pass. Yeah, it, hopefully it's not something that, that happens a lot, Daniel. But when it does, boy, do you want to be prepared. Especially when it's somebody that, that you know you can help that you got to get to right away. Think about that. You got to get to them right away. And the dog's preventing you from doing that. You know, and, and you guys are there because you care about people. You want to help them. And it makes it really difficult when a dog doesn't let you do that. Well, for that matter, it's very difficult when anybody doesn't let you do that. And your altruistic behavior, um, uh, uh, really, really, you struggle with that because you want to help. You even want to put yourself in danger, you know, for that because of your behavior, your altruistic behavior. Uh-uh, I, I want to reserve that. Pull it back if you can with a plan. All right, Valerie San, uh, San Filipino's on here. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, do you regularly classes on different things? Do you have regular classes on? Yes, I do. I do, but um, my classes are limited right now, Lori. Um, I only allow five, and so I just work on each individual's problems at that time. Bill Wilberg is on here. How you doing, Bill? <laughs> it's been a long time. Oh, boy. Connie Rademacher, thank you. Deb is watching. All right, let me uh, really quick here. Lisa Albro, thank you, Lisa. Got a good question, though, Daniel. I'll take care of you. I do it quite a bit. It's a common question I get asked when I do the training. I'll be in uh, 
uh, North Dakota here uh, next uh, this week coming up, and there's usually a first responder uh, in the audience, and I do have to we do have to do a sidebar and we talk about that. Uh, uh, let's see here, Gwen. Gwen Schaefer, dog reactivity to a doorbell ringing. I have three dogs. They go nuts. Uh, ah, okay. Let me let me answer that, then I'll show you the video. When, remember, that's Gwen. That's a trigger, isn't it? Right? That's a trigger. So in a lot of cases, I deactivate my, my um, doorbell if it gets really bad. And then I tell people, don't knock. All right? Don't knock. Let me know when you're coming. You have your unexpected guests. That's fine. You're not... You're not uh, repeating over and over and over, but that if the doorbell is a trigger, excuse me, if a doorbell is a trigger, you're going to have to deactivate the trigger until you get your dogs under control and relaxed. All right. Until you get under control and relaxed. That's a trigger. All right. Really quick. Let's, uh, let me look at really quick before I start. All right. I'm on track and it's okay. Let me show you the video. No other questions here. Uh, Michelle Holis is on here. Thank you, Kate Breslin. Thanks for doing this live, Hector. You're welcome, Kate. Hey, Katie, when, when are we going to get together and meet? Uh, I understand that you're one hell of a good trainer in Lansing. All right? I got to learn something from you, Katie. <laughs> I know you got something. We both got to share. I heard some really good things about you. Um, I think Carol is also the trainer. I'm not sure if that's... I just know you by Carol Krieger. I don't know you by the other names, but that's an, um, the Carol Krieger that I, that I know that's in Lansing is also a very good trainer. I hear a lot of good things about her. I hear she's really good with people. So this, this, is, this is something that it's really nice to get feedback from both. Mary Pounce is on here. Mary, I think you're from Mexico. I hope that is the Mexico Maria. I'm not sure. The Maria that I know, Ponce, is in Mexico. Uh, all right, let's see here. Uh, Kaylee Van Ed is another good trainer. Uh, doorbells on TV shows. Oh, that's a, that, that's a tough one, isn't it? Because those are triggers. See, your whole objective when you raise, no, not me, sorry. <laughs> okay, I just, I just thought it was. Um, but anyway, it's very, very important. Those those triggers, you're really going to have to set boundaries with to see if it's just a boundary, all right? And that's where you have to teach the dog the word no. You have to give it value. All right, dog reactivity. How do you relax this dog? We're gonna, I'm going to let this dog bark. Then I'm going to talk about it because I take the volume off. I want to your body language. <laughs> So do you see the harness? You seen the harness? You seen the tags? I take everything off. And then I put a star mark on this collar, on this dog. Look where I am massaging, people. I am massaging on the side of the neck. Now, if you look here, just right here on the side, there is a nerve there, right there. That nerve is where I'm massaging. Now, you remember, this dog in the beginning was going crazy, reactive. And now you're going to see this dog. This dog did not have an ear infection, and he was really good with other people. So I got a good, good thing, to, good platform of a dog to use. I had many other videos, but I needed a little better dog. Oop, I hit that button. Now, I also i am going to massage this dog's spine also, his central nervous system. So I'm massaging the neck, that nerve on the long from the bottom of their ear that comes down their neck. You'll feel it on dogs who are reactive and aggressive. All right? Don't, I'm not... I'm not a, uh, I don't know the anatomy of a dog as good as veterinarians. My understanding, that's the vagal nerve. 
uh, or vagus, vagal, or uh, I, I think it's vagal, but it's the side of the neck right here. And then I massaged the back. Now, this dog didn't ha they had very little stress on the inside of the shoulder blade. This dog was perfect for, the sh for, for what I'm teaching. I mean perfect. So I massaged that, that nerve right here. Right there. It, uh, that thing was a knot when I touched it. And I mean a knot. It, I can't tell you how much of a knot. I know that's subjective. But trust me, that is a huge knot. Both sides of the neck, I did. And then I, and then I started walking the dog a little bit to relax the dog. Thank you, Kevin Garman. Garvin, I like your profile picture, Kevin. You're already a good friend of mine. <laughs> uh, you're thinking of Carol Hines. Yes, that's who I'm thinking about. Yes. Okay. So I'm massaging the inside there. That, that muscle, there's that nerve there. That muscle tightens it right up. Boy, once you get, you can already see it. Now, you won't see it really relax until right around four to five minutes. Doesn't take very long. Doesn't take very long. There it is. I'm massaging it. His mouth is still tense. You can see his legs still tense, or her legs are still a little tense. I gotta wait for that dog to open its mouth. Relax. You, you I gotta wait for the dog to yawn. Like maybe shake its whole body. But right now, it's just like it doesn't know what's happening. I'm massaging that neck out, and some dogs it hurts. There it goes. There it goes. It's starting to relax its mouth. Carlos Perez is on here. Thank you, Carlos. Relax the dog right there. And I'm, I'm standing over. Remember, you got to be careful which dog you do this with. Some dogs may not like that. So you have to pick the dogs wisely. There you go. I make the dog sit, and then I relax the dog's spine. I'm going to infer if the dog's neck is tight, I'm just going to massage the, the spine I'm not touching the bone. I'm going outside the, uh, the spine. I usually just cut my fingers. I cut my fingers like this so the spine's in the middle, and then I just go back and forth. And then this dog starts to relax already. Towards the end, it literally falls asleep. <laughs> and I even bring my dog out towards the end and, get the, and then work the dog through it. I, I wanted to make a short video, not a huge long one, but just, just remember where I'm massaging that nerve on the side of the neck. You'll feel it now that you know it's there, especially if you're a trainer. You, you have a lot of uh, dogs. So you'll be able to, you'll be able to, to feel that nerve. Uh, see, the dog wants to shake its body, but it, it, I have it's too, too restricted right now. But it wants to. But I think now another good place, and this one dog didn't have it, is to massage its it's uh, muscles. There it goes. Now it's relaxed. There we go. You can feel it too. The knots are gone. They're starting to go away, almost completely gone. There it is, looking up at me. Oh, it's just happy now. Oh man, thank goodness, it's finally out of my body. Now the neck. Uh, the neck. How about these muscles on their on their jaw? Yes, you may have to do that. Look at, the, look at the diagram here where all these nerves are on the dog around the head. Do you see that? All the nerves, they're on the head. I massage the dog's head. Look how relaxed it is. Look how relaxed it is. It's just sitting there now. Look, it's naked. No, nothing on the dog. Remember, I don't want any triggers. I want to see your body language. This is how it was when I came in. So you're massaging the neck here. Don't forget to massage the head here, ears. My first dog, Max, I had a Doberman. I'd massage his ears, like I would just massage his ears and he'd fall asleep next to me. And I, and I didn't know why. Uh, I really didn't investigate when I was 12, but I didn't know why at the time. But as I, as I, the more and more I do now, I figure things out. Now, I massage my dog, even my puppy now, I'd massage her, her, her jawline, 
I massage her eyes right here. I just follow the hair follicles. I massage it all, all the tension on her head, her ears, grab her ears and massage them up and down. This is why you gotta make sure your dog doesn't have an ear infection and do this, because it's gonna hurt, all right? Massage your ears, and then the most important spot is that neck. Most important spot is gonna be that neck area right around the side here. You saw the dog go from reactive, and then it was struggling. It was struggling to be in one place, and then it just relaxed and almost fell asleep at the end, all right? Relax that muscle here in the spine. This is dog reactivity. If you go to my how to decompress a dog, I talk about the inside of the shoulder blade. I talk about the back, okay? I talk about um, the, uh, the, the neck, but in different spots. So it's very important, or the shoulders, excuse me. It's very important that you identify where that tension is. For dog reactivity, most cases it's right along the side. Uh, sometimes rescues will bring me a dog that's very reactive um, or even aggressive, and, and I can't even massage them. They won't let me. Um, their owners haven't really bonded with the dog because they're just, they just have the dog. They haven't bonded with the dog enough that I'm going to tell them this because I don't want them to get bit. So they need, you need to bond with your dog if you have a rescue dog because if you cause any type of pain or uncomfortableness, the dog can react to you. So you got to be very careful. you got to be very careful. This is why I want to make sure I put that disclaimer out there. Yes, I'm telling you to do it, but you have to make sure that you're not going to take, you're not going to be at risk if you do. Okay, very, very important. I hope that helped, but it will. Tanya Ford's watching. Tanya, how's your dog doing? Went to your house. You're my niece's friend. I do remember that. Angela Bozo's on here. The good Angela Bozo. <laughs> Rachel Phillips is on here. Thank you, Rachel. It's been a while. I see you graduated. Good job, girl. Very good job. Uh, let me make sure I got everybody here. So that's the area to get. This sides. Both sides. Now, that dog had it really bad on the left side only. Only. It can happen where it's both sides. But you got to be able to feel that. And then I took that away, and then the dog just relaxed. Now, remember to take those triggers out. You got to take those. If I put the harness back on that dog and the, uh, the flat collar with the tags, what is the dog going to get? What signal is the dog going to get? Hey, let's get reactive again. That's what I'm used to. That's the noise I hear when I am reactive. So those are triggers, almost like a doorbell, Carol. The, those chains and the collar is like a doorbell. Now, if they hear the doorbell, you have to be able to set boundaries with your dog. You got to be able to tell your dog no, but your dog has to respect the word no. Your dog has to have value in that word no. If you yell no and your dog looks at you and gives you the finger, there's no value to that word. Yes, we know what it means, but the dog hasn't paired it with anything. It hasn't. And a lot of the dogs that I get who are dog reactive and even dog aggressive, you'll hear or you'll even see on my, um, on my Google review, my dog, Hector fixed it in 15, 30 minutes, an hour. It was a whole new dog. That's because I set boundaries with the dog. Don't do that. When I say no, you stop. That just fixes it. It doesn't solve it. What solves it? Plan in a way that complements your instinct. Now, once you get your dog re, um, once you get your dog reset, and and you're you're going good, you're playing with the dog. Is it a good idea to take your dog for a walk in the same areas where it was reactive? I think you can answer your question yourself. You know it's not, because those again are what triggers. So I usually tell the owner to reroute themselves, go to a different area with the different equipment and restart yourself, all right? Or even don't walk. Don't walk in that area. Drive somewhere and go for a walk. You got whole new situations, whole new areas the dog's not gonna be triggered. Now you can reset the dog. But going for a walk in the same areas where it was, or, um, where it was reactive is not gonna help. Remember, dogs are in a different world. They're gonna, they're gonna see and hear things around their world and trigger and make pairs. 
If they got attacked by a dog in a certain block, they're going to remember that block. And what's going to happen? Their, their, uh, their nervous system is going to be heightened. They're going to anticipate the dog coming again. And so it's very important that you reset the dog in different areas to do this. Haha, my dogs are reactive to your voice. When you said no, they both, they both perked their ears. Yeah, they remember, Rochelle. They remember. When, when, when that word, they paired it. They paired it even at, your, at my facility with you. <laughs> German Shepherds. I remember, yeah. So very, very important, you guys. That's so important. Now, how do I relax my dog also? So one of the first things I did with my puppy, I got her in about four and a half months. One of the first things I did, I know she's predisposed to be aggressive. So then what do I need to do? Give me one second. I got to share my screen here. I have to do is, this is my dog, Sweetie, by the way, is I have to teach her to speak. So when I teach her to speak, here she's, this is last week. When I teach her to speak on command, she's relaxing that nerve. She's relaxing herself. And a lot of times they relax themselves internally when they're barking. All right. So it's very, very important. When I know my dog is predisposed to be aggressive, I'm going to teach my dog to speak. I'm going to teach my dog to speak on command. All right. And then don't forget to massage your dog, not just the neck, but its head. Its head. All the nerves. Remember that picture? All the nerves were on the head. You know, here, here, everywhere. Just follow the hair follicles. Now, I didn't do it on that uh, pit bull because the only tension that I felt was on that neck. This is why she was perfect for the show. She was perfect. So thank you, Zachary and Jenny, all right, or Debbie. I think it was Jenny. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so very important. This dog was perfect because it only had it on its neck. Now, don't forget the head. And then feel the rest of the body, trainers. Can you imagine being tense in certain parts of the body and then seeing something that triggers your, 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 uh, your automatic nervous system? What's going to happen? Boom, they react. What happens when they look out the window? Their body tenses up over and over, over and over, over and over. Of course, they're going to get tense after a while. Even if you take them out and play, stop letting them look out the window. Very important. Odie speaks on command for a treat. That's good. No, if he wouldn't shut up and command, that would be great. Well, you can teach him to be quiet now. All right? You've already taught him to speak. Now is a good time to teach him to be quiet. All right? Very, very important. Now that they know. How to differentiate with the two. Uh, let me uh, take this off here. I'm going to do something here. Just give me one second here. Yeah, so again, dog reactivity, drama, drama. Uh, take all the triggers off. Teach him to speak. What's another thing you can teach him to do? Uh, doggy push-ups. Sit and down, sit and down, sit and down, sit and down. Doggy push-ups are really good to get a dog to reset. So if there's another dog in front of them, sitting down, sitting down, all right? Now, you don't want to get them to bark when there's another dog there because then they're being reactive. I teach them to bark before the dog gets there. So I'm going to relax the dog and, and just keep them moving, and then I'm going to go for a walk if I were to do that. So the barking is a way to relieve that, that tension. Relieve that neck. Relieve that nerves, those nerves around the neck, all right? We, we as humans, when we have that tension around their head, you know, what do we do? We, we can sing. We can hum. Humming is very good. When you hum, mm, it relaxes your, your head. So some things, make a few parallels. Just make a few. Change your walking routine. Very, very important. Uh, Tug of war relaxes our facial muscles. One of the worst narratives out there is don't play tug of war with your dog. Oh my goodness. That has probably put so many dogs to sleep because how else are the dogs are going to relieve tension if you don't play tug of war? How? No, that tension gets built and built and then they snap. Very important. Uh, is it easy to teach to speak? I struggle with teaching my dog 
uh, Bog Barker how to be quiet, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Bog Barker, yes, it is easy. Uh, just like Sabrina said, you can use a treat. Uh, I usually will tie my dog up. I didn't have to, this dog. My dog, my dog just barked obsessively, so I just labeled it, and then, then I taught her to be quiet. Um, but you can teach him to speak, pull him up somewhere, maybe on a harness, tie him up somewhere, and then from a distance, entice him with something that they like a lot, and just tease him, and then uh, within 30 seconds, even if you get like a whine, just throw him the tree or throw him the ball, and then work your way up to a, to a speak. But it, it shouldn't be that difficult. It really shouldn't. It relaxes the dog so much from internally, Dave, right from internal, Dave, it releases them out. Very, very good um, tool to use. But don't forget to massage the face, the ears, the temples. Now, one thing I also do that you really got to be careful about, and I will also, I did it a little bit with this dog, is I would take their neck and just stretch it a little bit. Just stretch it a little bit. Just stretch it. Not very much. Just stretch their neck just a little bit. Not a lot. And not that it hurt the dog. Just stretch it and then massage it while you stretch it. Okay? Just relax that, that, that nerve there. You'll see how it relaxes. And then reset them again. Change equipment. No window or yard patrolling. Massage the most uh, tense areas. Uh, play in a way that complements their instinct. And then consider uh, rerouting your route. So taking them to the dark park and over-socializing them, you're setting up a bunch of triggers. And it ain't going to work. One of the things, one of the reasons why it's not going to work is you can't control somebody else's dog. You can only control yours. We, talk, we talked about that in dog-to-dog -dog etiquette. It's easy to get them to speak now, not easy to get them to not speak. Um, you know what, Dave? I got my dog to stop barking by teaching it to bark. Because now it knew when not to do it. All right? Because when I said no, I said, hey, stop. Quiet. The dog, would, okay, that means no bark. And then I would say speak. And then I would reward it. And they, they learn it really quick. Remember, they're in a different world. They're in a different world. Do you teach uh, to speak for your training purposes? I remember when you had Malo bark at my dogs to see how they would. Yes. Yes, Gwen. I did that. I, I, it also relaxed him at the same time. It did. It also relaxed him at the same time. Uh, let me read something really quick here. No, Angela, he said T.O., tug of war. Right, tug of war. Very good. Wait, did you just say? Yeah, play tug of war. Thank you, Kaylee, for, uh, for um, responding to her. My dog, Fiona, left the couch and went into her crate when she heard your voice. <laughs> oh, you give her a kiss. I feel bad now. Gerald Jordan's watching. Uh, Angie. Hey, hey Hector, hope all is well. Angie's a, a really good trainer. I think you're in what, Washington now? In, uh, was it Washington or Oregon? I can't remember, Angie. I should. I should, though. But right now, my head's spinning. But another good trainer from out there. Carol Walker, great advice. I was excited to hear your advice and try this with my Piper. Do you remember I tried it with, um, with the other dog you had, Carol? I did it. I did it in, in that little room there, Carol. I massaged his neck his back, and then you saw him just relax. I remember. Tanya Ford, hey, Hector Duke is doing great. All right. Yes, thanks. I need to have you come. Uh, pups have left. Very, okay. Hey, we just got to work it out. I'll be gone this week, though. Uh, I feel like I might not be massaging it right. You know what? It, you're, it, is, it is not easy. Um, even on video, it can be subjective. Uh, Katie, thank you. I heard it wrong. That's okay. I hear things wrong too. Yes, Washington, you better get your butt out here soon. Well, hey, Angie, I do have a uh, a talk. I'm uh, I'm just finalizing the contract to go out there and do a talk. I'll let you know uh, when it gets finalized. Uh, Corey Wood Woodby is here. Been a while, Corey. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yes, you do remember. Good, Carol. I'm glad you remember because I did. I did, and it relaxed the dog right away. Now, Mantro, yeah, remember, sometimes in training, I don't have time to explain everything I'm doing. I just do it. And, and this is why it's really hard. And a lot of the time, people are like, oh, I didn't know you did this, Hector. I did it to your dog. just didn't have time to, to, you know, to explain it because I got four other people there, especially on the first day. It's crazy. You know, the second day is off leash, or the first day it has got to be good. 
All right, Murdoch is super chatty. Can I teach him to be quiet? Yes, yes. We have freaking conversation. Drives my family crazy. But Murdoch quickly controls the conversation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, your dog's a little manipulative too, just like mine is, and, which means it's not a bad thing. They just have a lot of personality, Rochelle. You know that as well as I do. They got a lot of personality. Uh, so, so yeah. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna meet. Hopefully, I went over that. So if if the best way to handle dog reactivity is to um is to not let it happen. Don't let it happen. Don't let them look out the window. Don't don't set them up to fail by taking them to a dog park and a dog out of your control hurts your dog. Now your dog is unsure about dogs it doesn't know and then it does a preemptive preemptive bark or even preemptive aggression because it's trying to keep the other dog away. Got, just think about how that could happen. Not very difficult. All right. I set boundaries with dogs. I teach a dog that it's unacceptable to do that. This, these are the dogs that get fixed right away. Remember, when, when I talked about discipline and punishment, how I teach men not to punish and to discipline, and I teach women to discipline, and that, when I do that with the dogs who are reactive, once, I, once I, the dog knows not to do that, now we can go into what? How to solve it with a ball. How to solve it by not letting them look out the window. How to solve it by not letting them outside by themselves and being reactive with other dogs in the perimeter fence. So this is why it's very important for that to happen. And then resetting a dog who is aggressive. All right? To go a quick review, take everything off that it's used to. You might have to change the commands. You might have to change the commands because you might have paired the command with something the dog is doing. If the dog has tags, take them off. Take them off. Those are triggers for many bad things. I don't, dog shouldn't hear anything. Shouldn't hear anything, all right? And then you're gonna have to reset the dog's collar, have a different collar on him, or even naked dog obedience. Have them naked when you're in the house for a while until, until you reset them, then you can go back to a collar. Then you can go back to a collar. It's a process, remember. Doesn't, uh, if the dog's aggressive, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't, and sometimes it gets worse because the owners are not massaging it. So I had a rescue group who the lady refused to have me train any of her rescue dogs because her dog, one of her client's dogs got worse. But what she failed to ask, and I, I know this, she failed to ask their doctors, did you do anything to solve the dog's problem? Obedience doesn't, doesn't solve the problem. It fixes it. And what did she do? Overexpose the dog. As soon as she came out of my class, she took the dog to different places to think that, okay, now I have to take my dog. to No, I told you not to do that because your dog's not ready for that. So a yes, it's going to get worse. You're not even playing with the dog. You're not even relieving their stress with a tug of war with a ball. Of course it's going to get worse. And even worse, the muscle relax that I did to the dog, it came back again because you're not doing anything to manage it. The responsibility is not on the trainer to solve it. The responsibility on the trainer is to fix it. Your job is to solve it. And, and, if, and if you're going to get a rescue dog who wh whatever happened to it before, you got a little bit of a job to do. But don't give up on these dogs. They had to put that dog down. That was a disservice to that dog. It's no fault of this dog's, this dog's fault that the dog was used to being a dog aggressive towards other dogs. Now, our job is to reset the dog, but don't set him up to fail afterwards and then blame the trainer. That's ridiculous. No, my job is to fix it. Your job is to solve it. Very, very important. Uh, let me make sure here. It's common for a puppy of eight weeks old to fight. How do I fix that? They are brothers... Yes, go to my, my, um, my website, Penny, and get a flyer on how to raise two puppies at the same time. Sibling syndrome is what it's caused. Littermate syndrome. Those are the two names that it comes. But read my flyer. It'll tell you, you've got to separate these puppies with play with an object, not with each other. All right? You very, very, if they're starting to fight at eight weeks old, have fun when they're a year old, two years old. Uh-uh. Don't get my flyer. 
Very, very important. Uh, Patty uh, White is watching. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, uh, Fiona loves her frequent massage. She's still having problems with the yard patrolling. It doesn't matter if I'm outside with her or just inside the door watching. Long leash out there, um, Michelle. Long leash. So you're out there. But when you're out there, make sure you play with the dog. Don't just be out there. Play with it. I tell people I show you how to fix your job. Uh, it's your job to put in the work. Yes, yes. That's the hard part, Daniel. And the reason why, Daniel, is because your training that you do to this dog reflects on you. Because they'll say, well, the dog, you know, the trainer didn't help me. Well, yes, we did. We fixed it. But it's your job to solve it. And it always comes back on the trainer. I take notes after a session. So if, if they say something, I can go refer back to my notes. Although a lot of times I remember them, but I still take notes. And this is why when, when um, owners will say stuff on Facebook, you know, I'll say, listen, I'll, put them, uh, I'll DM them. I said, look, these, this is the video and this is the notes that I took of you. That's, that's very disingenuous for you to say this online. My job was to fix you and your job was to solve it. I mean, I'm not going to bash them. I just say very disingenuous. You know, I have a reputation to help people, and you're, and you're, you're using this misinformation to, to discredit me, which is not very ethical. Your choice or not, whether you want to remove it, I'm not going to tell you that. In most cases, people, if you give me a bad comment on Facebook, most people will look at my page even more. So go ahead. But, but still, very, very important. Uh, make sure I didn't miss anything. Do... High alert, yeah. Um, look at my uh, my flyer on how to manage your dog, Sabrina. But also, you're talking about PTSD with dogs. A lot of massaging, a lot of play. Um, don't forget the neck area um, in the neck that I just showed you here, and then the head. The head, you gotta get this done. And then if your dog has an adrenaline gland fatigue, you're gonna have to get an adrenaline uh, gland fatigue supplement to relax the adrenaline gland fatigue, um, which most likely it sounds like that's what you have on your dog. So he loves her massage. I put her to sleep from them, but it does calm her. Yes, Missy, I'll be over. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, this is such good advice. If you don't use what has been fixed, you'll lose it. I, I like that, Kaylee. I like that. Very good. We as trainers help fix what's going on with the dogs and give the owners the tools, but owners must keep up what they teach. We're not the ones that will live with the dog the rest of the... And you know what, Angie? It, it, it always comes... Not always. Uh, be hyperbolic about this. It, in some cases, it comes back on us trainers because they're not following through. This is why it's important that I tell them, you got to follow through. You got to follow... Don't waste the money that you spent with me. Please follow through. It will help. It will help. Aradi is almost eight months old and she does not like to come when you call her. I've tried everything. Do you have a video on this issue? Go, go to the long leash. Randy, Randy uh, in one of my shows, was talking about the long leash. Do you remember that? Randy Holton, he, he was talking about the long leash, Angela. And put a long leash, call the dog to you, give it a treat or give it a ball and just teach the concept with the long leash first. I mean, if the dog is uh, not on a leash and it decides to just give you the finger and keep doing what he's doing, then you're not following through. At least starting to follow through with the, with the, um, with the long leash will help. Hey, Randy Holton just came on. Just mentioned your name, Randy. <laughs> uh, Brooke Denny's on. Denny is on. Thank you, Brooke. Candy Jackson's on. Um, yeah, come on, <laughs> Missy. <laughs> Don't you dare tempt me, Missy. <laughs> Jerome Minoka's on here. Uh, yep, I remember. Yep. Uh, so, so, yeah, go back to the long leash like Randy Holmes suggested in the other show that I had. You were on that show, I remember. So, it, uh, so very important. This was about how to reset the dog. If you want me to replay the video, I can. I got another. I can, I can go over a few minutes here. I think Kane is very jealous of the pups. He could be. He could be. Now, a lot of the times when we start putting and loving a dog, your dog wants it too because, again, you're using trigger body language that they're associating with something positive. All right? So they, they want it again too. Okay, thank you. My grandkids came over 
and Cain was in the kitchen sitting when they were all petting him and gave him, oh man, isn't that something else? Uh, oh, wait a minute, and gave me that look and gave that warning growl. What do I do? He might have had too much. It's overwhelming. It's too much. Um, he's, a warning is, a, bar, a growl is good. That means get, give me my space. So that's good. Now get to know your dog's threshold so you don't set your dog up to fail, Penny. Don't put him in situations for too long that he's going to feel that uncomfortable with. But there's nothing wrong with growling that tells you the dog's threshold. Now that you know it, don't set him up to fail. Right? Very important. Dog, as a dog gets older, you know, they want their personal space. As we get older, we want our personal space. What are we talking about? We growl too. We use words. Step away. I don't know you. We, don't, we, we often don't give that same respect to dogs. And, and dogs need that. They, they really do. They feel safe when you give them, when you give them that. They feel safe. Uh, let's see here. Give me one second. Yes, replay it. I entered this late. Come on, late. Will you have the video on? Uh, let me do it right now uh, really quick. I'll review it again. It's kind of nice, too, because at the same time, I, uh, I want to show you that same picture that I have. I want to see your body language. <laughs> Is a dog reactive now? What do I do? I put, I take everything off the dog the dog had. Remember the dog came in with a harness? It came in with a flat collar with tags on it. And in even, in, in even just relaxing the dog out of that, and then I put a star mark on this dog because its trachea was sticking out. I didn't want to put a nylon choke chain. It's rare that a trachea sticks out on a dog like this, but it, it did. Now look where I'm massaging, right? In that neck. Again, I'm looking at this area right here. This nerve right here, I'm rubbing off. And then look at all the nerves around the face that I need the massage too on a dog who's reactive. The ear, the nose, the head. Oh, this muscle right here is a good one. So this is all the areas, still tense. It still wants to be reactive, doesn't it? You can see its body tense up. Still wants to be reactive. Alan Delo, uh, Dillo's on here. Thank you, Alan. Will you have more sessions in aggression dogs soon? Yes, I will. Um, I'm working on an, a new facility. I have a few places to, uh, to choose from. I just need to find the right place. Margaret Rose is back on. Thank you, Margaret. Back on again, Laura Brown. Yep. So I'm massaging the dog's neck. I also do the dog's spine. I can infer that it's a little, little tense. So we're at, we're at two minutes in this video right now. We're at two minutes. I wanted to keep the timer here so you'd see it. I'm relaxing. I didn't, I didn't think you wanted me to hear what I had to say to the owners. Sometimes I'll say a joke because I see them tense. Sometimes I'll say certain things that just pertain to their dog based on the context that, they, that, um, that, uh, that I'm referring to their dog about. So I, I, I muted that. And then I massage the dog's neck right there. There's a, there is a knot. That's the right side. The left side, I think, it was more knotted. And then I just massage these knots out. That, that nerve is so tight. I mean, it was so tight. I'm waiting for the dog's mouth to open and relax. Here it is. You can see it shake a little bit, right? And remember, if a dog chatters its teeth, that's a sign of nerves. So in some, in sometimes when I do this, the dog's teeth will chatter because I'm, I'm hitting a nerve there. And this dog's starting to really like it. And here, I come up to three minutes here. Up to three minutes, I'm relaxing. I start to see the dog start to need to shake it off or start to need to walk a little bit. So I just walk the dog a little bit, relax the dog. But I got to get that nerve, vagal nerve, right there. Massage it. There it is. It's starting to, starting to come. There it is. I step on the lead to better control the dog. 
I go on top of the dog just so I can get better, uh, a better position in relaxing the dog. Very good dog, handled, handled me, didn't even know me, and it just, just handled it really well. Look at his mouth, ch uh, almost chatter a little bit. Get those nerves to relax. There she goes. Very good dog. Didn't have to talk a lot about the stomach with this dog. I did a little bit, but not a lot. And then I got to walk this dog off a little bit. This is the only time I edit. The only time I edit is when I walk away. And then, and then you start to see the dog really relax here. Right around, right around between the four to five minute mark. They're still really... I, I'm putting a lot of pressure on here, people. This isn't, this isn't soft. This is a really hard, pretty hard. I know that's subjective, but it is pretty firm. I, I do it pretty firm. I want to relax those muscles. So depending on how, hard, how uh, tense they are will determine you know, what level of pressure I put on there. And then you'll start to see the dog start to relax right around five minutes. See, it's still a little nervous by the quiver of the, the end of its, uh, its uh, lips there. Still a little nervous, but at least I know it's the nerves based on the body language. And I can see it from where I'm at. I can see it from where I'm at. I want to walk it off a little bit, relax the body by walking. And this is where you'll start to see it. no jerking. You don't jerk the dog when you're walking with this collar. It's not designed to jerk, just designed to manage the dog. And this is when you start to see a change. I say sit and I make the dog sit. No, no correction, just make the dog do it. Yeah, this is where you, there it is, right at the five-minute mark, right around there. Yeah, finally, I'm relaxed. That neck, you see the nerve, you can see the, you can see this diagram right here, the neck right here. All the facial nerves that I want to relax too. I want to be able to relax, to, I massage the dog, just look at the hair follicles on the dog and just run your fingers through their whole face and their, uh, their ear. You'll see a bunch of tension come out too. But that, that's a good spot right there. Their jaw, I massaged her, right? There wasn't a lot of tension on that dog other than that nerve. That nerve was like a rock. I mean, literally like a rock. And then we go off leash, and then I relax the dog completely. Almost looks like it's falling asleep by his eyes. And then you'll see how it was in the, from the beginning. So this is the end result. I want to see your body language. <laughs> that we that the dogs cause and just think about you having a really kink neck and then expecting you go to a new area and expect to be in a good mood <laughs> I know I'd be irritable very irritable um, so just just kind of make some parallels I, I know they're not human but you know they, they they do handle stress differently but just as a trainer I, I get to learn that from different dogs I don't think I'm better than anybody or any other trainer what, what I tell trainers is put yourself in, in these dog situations. Don't, don't push these dogs. If you want to learn, then learn from them. But, but, but know your limitations on which dog you can do it on. There's some dogs I'd be damned if I touch. Ain't happening. The owners are touching them. But then I also tell the owner, has the dog ever tried to bite you before? All right. If he did, then I'll put a head halter on the dog or a muzzle and then we massage. Many cases where I've done that. Safety is number one. Liability, very important, all right? Uh, let's see, Nancy, have you ever worked with a dog that just would not come down and the owners were unable to take the dog in public? Yes, um, yes, I have, Nancy. What happened with those dogs, they're, they're PTSD or anxiety, or anxiety. So then I had them fix their stomach for the anxiety, and then if they have PTSD, yes, I'll massage them, but they have so many triggers because of something that happened traumatic, Nancy, that I tell them, you're going to be limited the way you take this dog now because those are strong triggers. So I kind of label that as social anxiety. I label that as social anxiety. As soon as you get overstimulated, you get anxious and then you, you trigger. All right. Some people, what do they do? Some people internalize it and other people, they get more agitated. I seen a guy on the plane get very, very agitated and just start yelling and cussing. 
And I, he was just overwhelmed. Too much. Way too much. Overstimulated. Need to get him out and reset him outside, all right, before he got tased or something. So, what, so the dogs, they'll express it out with aggression. Some internalize it, Nancy, and it turns into fear. This is why it's important to not say, oh, over-socialize them. No, don't do that. Does neutering uh, really calm a male dog? Why are you thinking that is what I tell people. Now, if they have a problem with procreation or their, um, their testosterone is too high, then yes, it will. And there's ways to ascertain that, Nancy. But in those cases, yes. My old dog, Malo, I had to neuter him young because he was marking, starting to mark everywhere. So I knew it was over testosterone because the season wasn't for, for breeding. So I know it was something else. So before it became an issue, I neutered him. But, but there are certain identifications to let you, let you know whether that's going to help or not. Uh, I, know, I know many people who haven't neutered their dogs, and they have absolutely no problem with them. No problem with them. Uh, let's see. Yes, humans need to go sit down somewhere quiet too. Yeah, me too. I'm that way. I'm at the airport. Too many people. Somebody wants to talk to me. No speak English. <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to relax. I just want to chill. <laughs> Elisa, oh, I hope Huck is doing good. Uh, we realize that Huck starts to grow when, when a male lens leans over him to pet him. We also change his food uh, to the salmon mix. Very good. So look, uh, Elisa, you identified his trigger. Very good. He doesn't like to be over-dominated. He, he's a sensitive dog. Boy, did we find that out. Big baby. It's good, though. Not bad, it's good, all right? But at least you've identified that. Very good. You guys uh, were really good, you and your husband. Excellent, excellent, excellent owners for a dog like him. Just don't set your dog up to fail, all right? Very important. Know your, hey, come on, people. We know our limitations. Quit thinking that our dogs are perfect. I know I'm not. I know my, my, uh, my shortcomings. I know what I can't do and what I shouldn't do. He's a baby, and he's listening very attentively to your voice. <laughs> oh, boy. That's a good dog. I remember him well in our, in our, uh, in our review session. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, instead of avoiding triggers that some can't be avoided. Yeah, you can't, and it really sets you up to fail. Is there a way to teach them not to? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. You got to relieve those triggers. It, it's, uh, it goes right into their automatic nervous system. Boom, and they react. So you got to take some of those triggers away. This is why I suggested the, uh, the adrenaline gland support to relax them a little bit. And in some cases, you may have to go to your vet to get, to get something else, even a little bit stronger than that for that, for that case, uh, Sabrina. Uh, that's what I thought. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Penny. I, lead to learn, I learned so much, and I learned from you too. I, I, learned, I learned there's still a lot of good people out there from you, Penny. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, all right, let me make sure I don't have any other questions here on my other one. Uh, would this massaging method be good if your dog is afraid of fireworks? Um, yes and no. If you massage the dog during the fireworks, you're going to make a parallel. You want to massage the dog before the fireworks or after. During you want to take the dog away from all of that. You got to play some loud music, put it in the basement, put a cover over it, and just let them chill. Maybe some medication. Maybe some medication. I have a show on that, by the way. I have a show on that, by the way, Angela. Karen Foster's on here. Glad you're watching, Karen. Um, Arissa Rodriguez is on here. Thank you for watching. Uh, Sammy hates yard machines. I have her use the quad now and... She knows we're run very good, but I take out the lawnmower weed whacker. She loses her mind, almost shreds her chuck it ball. Maybe let the machines run them. <laughs> no, um, what I would do is just not have her out there uh, or have a big ball, not a chuck it ball, like a soccer sized ball. Uh, my puppy, when, when she sees a cluster or, or when she sees a flock of birds, even in the bushes, she goes crazy with the ball in her mouth. She just shakes the ball. All right, it'll, it'll go away in time. It, it just, you just got to know 
who your dog is, not what your dog is. We know what it is. Now we have to find out who your dog is. You know, um, what it's, what it's, what is it that makes him authentic? What is it that makes you authentic? That makes you unique. And that's the thing we have to find with our dogs and ourselves and the person we're going to be with. Very important. Uh, to, to, to Karen Shepard, you find that dogs that have been a puppy classes are less triggered when they are adults. Uh, oh, good question, Karen. That depends if the trainer did the right thing. Example, there's puppies that I get that have gone to other puppies classes and that are worse. Here's why, Karen. The trainer let the puppies all play at the end. And the dogs learn some very bad habits. I do not do that. Do not suggest doing that. Your job as a trainer is to teach owners to expose their dogs, not socialize them that way. Unless the dog is shy and a little timid, then you can socialize them. But limit it. Limit it. All right? So it depends if the training was good. I spoke to a trainer in another state. And most of her training was all forceful methods. So she had experience with only forceful methods. Is it right? Not for some dogs. So she had a, what? Her percentage was very low on fixing dogs that were sensitive. But it was very high on dogs that are strong-willed. So it, it, it just depends on the trainer. It really does. You, you want some good, you want some good, um, Go, go to the reviews, talk to people who've been, gone through their classes, and do that. I'm not supposed to keep together, right? You can, but make sure that they're playing with something, not each other. So you say to separate them, that will help them get... Yeah, you can separate them first to get them to play with an object, and then bring them together so they play with an object separately, all right? No, it's a big chuck-it ball. I have to put her in the house, and she tries to kill the tire. Yeah, I mean, that's all way too much for her. Way too much. It's a trigger. It's a trigger. This is where you manage your dog. You don't set them up to fail. Sometimes trainers will overtrain a problem. And what do they when you when you overtrain a problem, you create other problems. You create other problems. So you really have to choose your battles. Right now, if I sit down on the couch, my puppy mauls me. She manipulates me. Well, you know what? This isn't a battle that I'm willing to take on right now, so I'm just letting her do it. Do it later. Or maybe not. <laughs> Katie, uh, Katie Breslin, got to hop off dog duties. Let's get together soon. I tell you what, Katie, I got to meet you. I've heard some very good things about you. I appreciate that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stay connected. Makes sense. Thank you. You're, well, you're welcome, Laura. Uh, we're not supposed to keep. Yeah. All right, you guys. I'm going a little over. I hope that helped. I don't know when my next show is going to be. Um, I know I have several different topics right now. I'll be able, I'll post it as soon as I get it. Um, please go back to my replay on my tribute to Malo, my dog. I think there's going to be a lot of information out there that I think will resonate with you. All right. Sandy Bolton. Uh, I've been using the tools I learned in your class. It's been literally off uh, of work, but Sasha is finally listening to my commands. How do I get in a review class to, uh, to call him? Oh, uh, Sandy, uh, thank you. The second thing is right now I'm in the process of moving to another facility. So give me a few weeks and I'll post my new place and I'll post where I'm at. And then I'll immediately put a review class up there, okay? And then we can get together and we can um, put the dog in situations to where we can uh, review your training, all right? But I, I'm on it. I'm on it. I'll be gone this week, and then I'm gone another uh, another three or four more days this month in Illinois doing another conference. I also do public speaking uh, on other topics unrelated to dogs, like how to, uh, how to deal with people, uh, difficult people, but that's not what I have on my flyer, how to deal with people, uh, top employee performance, I'm developing a, uh, an intense, an intense uh, presentation on how to value your life, intense presentation, and then culture diversity and other topics. So uh, unrelated to dogs, I, that's what I do, trying to fill my time, keep, me, keep my passion uh, busy. Uh, my, my, my mantra 
when it comes to when it comes to work is you don't have to like what you do. You don't even have to be happy. You just have to be productive. You just have to be productive. You don't have to like what you do. You don't have to be happy. You just have to be productive. And that and that right there will give you a purpose. Very, very important. All right, uh, let's see here. Looks like I got everything. Any other questions, send me a message. There's my email, qa at firstclassdogtraining.com. Thank you for being here. I know, I know some of this free information will help. I know it will. I'm glad to share it. I got to steal stuff from other trainers too. <laughs> I'm out there. I'm out there watching. <laughs> I don't know everything, but I know a lot. And I know these trainers, you know, they, they, they think different. They, they, they train different. So it's nice to learn from them. Really nice. Any other questions, send me a message, a text, a DM. Here's my email right there. Thank you for being here. I'll post my next show. I will post my next show. Thank you for being here again. I love you guys. We will see you next month. You got to give me this month off on the show. I did two this month. Give me some time, and then we'll work on my next topic. All right? You're welcome, Julia. Thank you for being here. Thanks. I appreciate that, Rochelle. Uh, Nancy Bravo, thank you for free info. Hey, it's free because it doesn't do any good for me here. You got to come out. All right? We'll see you next month, you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you for uh, helping me give this, this uh, live show. Thank you. You're the best. Ah, I appreciate you, Penny. You, uh, you bring out the, uh, the humanity in, in the world. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you. You're welcome, Gwen. We'll see you next month, you guys. I appreciate it. Before you start making me tear up a little bit. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. <laughs>